Hello, I'm Krista Spites, Director at Hale Planetarium, and I am excited to be giving another Star Talk. It's been a while since I've given a Star Talk. So I'm glad to be back with you virtually. Um, even though we're not in person, at least we can do this virtually. And I, I'm going to be using the program called Stellarium today. It's a free planetarium program, so you can actually download it yourself and use it. I even have a laser pointer I can use. So we're looking at the night sky um, on Friday night, about an hour after dark. In the western horizon, we've got, you know what this is? This, this right here is Orion's belt. So you've got these three stars of his belt. You've got a bright shoulder star here. Beetlejuice means armpit of the giant. He's got a head, another shoulder coming down to his waist. This bright star, Rigel, and then another star. So this is the constellation Orion. Now, one really cool thing that Orion has is a sword. So he's got a sword here hanging down from his belt. Let's zoom in on it. Oh, there we go. Got close to it. Okay. And notice, see, we've got this big fuzzy that's around the central star. Um, of his of his sword, the sword coming down in Orion, and um, that fuzzy is called the Orion Nebula. It's a giant stellar nursery. We've got a bunch of stars there, there that are all forming out of this big cloud of dust and gas. Let's also look down here because there's another nebula just just below it. Isn't that gorgeous? There are all sorts of things that, that you can um, discover in, in Stellarium. Use it to explore the night sky. I'll post a link to the program so you can download it on yourself and play around with it. So we're gonna zoom back out to the night sky. All right, so here we are back on Earth. Now we're going to use Orion to get to a bunch of different constellations. First, we're going to take his belt and we're going to use it to point. Let's point this way. So we're going to point towards the east and we get to this bright star here called Sirius. No joke, Sirius. And um, maybe eventually I'll come up with a, a new joke and not use that one, but probably not anytime soon. Anyway, here's Sirius. It's called the dog star because it's the head of the dog, Canis Major. So you've got his head, it's kind of his neck. His head is kind of made up of these stars here. Body, tail, leg, other leg. If we come down here, well, um, turn on the constellation lines. Okay. So here's, here's the dog, uh, Canis Major. He's one of Orion's hunting dogs. Orion has two dogs. We'll get to his other one later. I'm going to turn off the lines so you can see these stars again um, in the night as you will when you go outside and look up. Take his belt and go west and you go right through this V right here. You zoom out a bit. This V that extends up here is the constellation Taurus the Bull and Aldebaran is the eye of the bull. You continue out that line and you get to this little group of stars here called the Pleiades. The Pleiades 
is an open star cluster. These stars are, um, have just recently formed out of the same cloud of dust and gas. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out and we'll go back to Taurus. So there you can see V. These are the horns of the bull and this is his head. He's protecting the seven sisters from Orion. Above um, Taurus, we've got this constellation, it looks like a house, I'll turn off the lines. This is Ariga. Ariga is a charioteer and he's carrying a goat because of course, why not? I'll turn on, put on some art too. So there's the goat, Capella and um, Ariga. Now, if we go back to Orion, we are going to take his stars, these two bright stars, Rigel and Betelgeuse, and we draw a line up, and we get to these two bright stars called Castor and Pollux. They are part of um, Gemini, Gemini the twins. And you can see, easily see how that looks like. Um, two stick people there. I'm going to turn off the lines for a second. Again. So you take these two bright stars and go up and you get to these two bright ones. And you've got two people here. Now, if you take his, um, back to Orion, take his shoulder stars, draw a line up you get to these two stars here. Um, Procyon means before dog, because Sirius is the dog star, and so Procyon rises before the dog star. And um, these two make up a constellation. See? A line. Yep, it's a line. This line is um, the little dog, um, Canis Minor. So you've got Canis Minor. Now we're going to zoom out and look at all the bright winter stars. Rigel, Aldebaran, Capella, Castor Pollux, Procyon, Sirius, and back to Rigel. And these make up what is called the winter circle. It's an asterism, which is an easily, easily recognizable shape um, in the night sky. This asterism happens to be made up of stars from many different constellations. We do have a bright planet in the sky. Let's go to it. In the west, we've got Venus. Now, did you know that Venus has all sorts of, um, it can show many, all the different phases. We zoom in on it and you, we can see that it's almost a quarter phase. Venus is the brightest planet in the sky. It's even brighter than Jupiter. It's also the hottest planet in the solar system, even though it is um, not the closest one, uh, not the closest one to the sun. It's hotter than Mercury because it's got this really thick atmosphere. And that thick atmosphere holds in all the heat. Okay, let's move around a little bit and look at some other constellations. We zoom out. Aha. Here in the south, southeast, We've got this long snaky thing. It's a snake, name is Hydra. Hydra, um, there are several stories about Hydra and I'm gonna tell you the one that goes with the crow. So here's the crow, Corvus the crow, and Crater the cup. So Corvus the crow was sent by um, 
the Greco-Roman god Apollo down to get some water. So he sent him down, he had this big cup. So um, the crow comes, he's got the cup. Oh, I can turn on the art. And um, he goes down and he's distracted. He's supposed to get the water and come right back, but he sees a fig tree and he's thirsty. So he's like, I mean, hungry. So he eats figs, becomes so full, he goes into a food coma, falls asleep, and then wakes up and goes, oh no, I was supposed to bring, I was supposed to be bringing water to Apollo. I'm in so much trouble now. Ah, but then he sees a dead snake lying there by the, by the water. So he gets an idea and he grabs the snake in the water, flies back up to Apollo and says, so sorry I'm late. It's been such an ordeal. I got down to the water thing. I was going to get your water and come straight back, but there was this snake there and I had to kill the snake first before I could bring you your water. Well, of course, Apollo knew that the bird was lying. So he punished him and put him in the sky with the cup and the snake so that we could all learn from his lesson. And he punished him by putting him just out of reach of the water. So he couldn't reach the water and he was, so he's thirsty for all of eternity. And this is why crows today sound hoarse. I love that story, it's such a fun story. And you can see it in the night sky. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the art and turn off the sticks for a second. So we're, gonna, we're looking south. We've got the bright star, Procyon, and then over here in the um, east, we've got Arcturus, which we'll get to in a second. And halfway between them, there's a pretty bright star, and this one is called Regulus. Regulus has a special place in my heart because I saw it during the day. Um, I got to see the solar eclipse in totality going down to South Carolina and saw it and, and in 2017 um, and it happened right here. It was right there where the sun and the moon were. So the sun was there, the moon came in front of it and blocked it up, totally blocked it. And, well, it, and, and when it was dark, I took my binoculars and I saw Regulus right next to the sun. And now when I see Regulus, I always remember that time when I saw it during the day. And that was just an incredible experience. Okay, Regulus is part of the constellation of Leo, Leo the lion. So it's the base of the front paw of the lion, basically. So you see this backwards question mark here? We've got a backwards question mark, and then if we go this way, you've got a right triangle. I always imagine this lion is sitting down. So here's his head. There's his front paw, it kind of goes out to here, right? But that's the front of his body, and then his front paw. And then you go back to his back leg, Right, and then you've got his body. Here. So this is Leo. Leo the lion. Now let's turn, we're going to turn again um, to the east. Go back down. Kind of go north and find some more constellations. There we go. So 
So here we are in the north. Do you see anything you recognize? How about up here? This is the Big Dipper. And as much as I, I'm enjoying this immensely, but not nearly as much as when I do it, um, when I do it in the planetarium for you live, because then I get your interaction and I miss that interaction. But I'm still really happy to be uh, doing this again, even virtually. Okay, here's our Big Dipper. And um, you've got the handle, so it's upside down this time of year, summer night, and then you've got the cup, right? And so um, the Big Dipper is an asterism that's part of the constellation Ursa Major. It's the big bear. Tail, body, body, here's two more stars of the body. So there's the front of the body, here's the head, here's the front leg, Here's the back leg. See, so here's, here's the bear. Now, we are going to take these two stars of the dipper and they point to the star here, Polaris. They're the pointer stars. They point to Polaris, which is the end of the handle of the little dipper, the end of the tail, of the little bear. So here's the end of the handle. Here's the end of the cup. These are about the um, only stars that you'll see unless you're in a pretty dark place. Um, but if you look carefully and you're in a dark enough area, you can see these two stars here and then one, two more. So there's the Little Dipper. That's an asterism, which is a whole constellation. That's all of Ursa Minor. So we have Ursa Major, the Big Bear, and Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. Funny looking bears, because they have those long tails. There's a good story that goes with that, but I'll say that for another day. If we take these two stars of the Big Dipper, they point to this star here called Thuban. Thuban is in the constellation of Draco the Dragon, which kind of snakes its way in between the Big and the Little Dippers. So here's Draco, Draco the Dragon. Now we're gonna use the Big Dipper and we're going to use these other stars that we haven't used yet. And we're going to arc to Arcturus. Arcturus is the bright star in the constellation Bootes. Bootes looks like a kite. So you've got this bright star, two stars here, two wider stars, and then one down here. So it looks like a kite. And then there's some down here too. It's actually a person. Um, he's the man who invented the plow, the plow being the, um, the Big Dipper, because it looks like a plow. And he was put in the sky to commemorate um, the benefit that he added to humanity. But I don't really see a person. It's kind of hard to see, even though this is supposed to be his head, shoulders, waist, Feet, to me, it looks like a tie. Or different times of the year, a kite or an ice cream cone. But right now it looks like a tie. So we have arced to Arcturus. Then we can spike to Spica. The star right here is Spica. It's in the constellation of Virgo. And right in here is where that black hole is that we got a picture of last year. And then from Spica, okay, so we've arced to Arcturus, spiked to Spica, then we can leap to Leo, to 
Regulus in Leo. I'm going to turn off the art and show you those bright stars and maybe you can find them. I can, I can see them on um, NKU's campus. So you probably will be able to see them from your house too. Um, okay, let me turn off the art. Okay, here's the Big Dipper. Put an arc to Arcturus. Here's a bright star. Continue that arc and we get to Virgo. Then we're gonna go up from there and we get to Regulus. So you should be able to find these three stars um, in the night sky. I hope you enjoyed this talk and I hope you will be back. Um, we'll be back next time. Keep looking up.